13 through 16. Read that, sister. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its, his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. Okay, stop right there. Who's the salt of the earth? We, all of us. We are. It says, ye are the salt of the earth. All of us are the earth. These words are in red, so Jesus is speaking, right? So can salt, can salt lose its saltiness? Yes. Yes. So it's good for nothing. Yeah. Nothing but to cast out an entire under. It's good for nothing. Cast out, trodden underfoot of men. Okay, keep reading. Verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do you light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. All right. So, Amen. you're not supposed to hide your light. That's what it says, right? You are the light of the world. Who's the light of the world? We are. We are. Okay. We are. We're not supposed to hide it and put it under a bushel, right? No. <laughs> what do you say? Let your light so shine, okay, that they may see your good work. Good work. Right, Y'all seen a pattern already, right? Yes. Good works. So your light is the good works that you do. People will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, we're not talking about good works that get you saved. It's by grace. The Spirit of God comes to you. Someone speaking and preaching the gospel. You believe the message. And by grace, when you believe, the Holy Spirit gives you the gift of God. He brings it salvation, deliverance. It's the grace. You are free from all sin, sin and death. You have eternal life. That's all free. You didn't do anything to do that. No man can boast. No man can boast. It's, it's free. You can't do nothing. You believe, but once you believe, you confess that he's your Lord. Right? Yeah. You are his workmanship. <laughs> in Christ Jesus unto what? Work. Good work. Good works. That you were foreordained to walk in them. He created you in Christ Jesus so you can do his works. He put his spirit in you so you can do the same thing Jesus did. The father's business. Now you have a co-mission. God is on a mission. He sent his son to the mission. Now he took his son up and put his son in all of you to continue the same mission. The co-mission. Two of us. All right. So let's keep on going. Hannah, you want to read the next one too? Go to chapter 7. 7, verse uh, 15. We're going to do 15 all the way down to 23, I mean to 27. 27, 15. Verse 15. Yep. Chapter 7, verse 15. It's on the screen. Okay. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Okay, there we go. Let's stop real quick. So you'll know them or a tree by its fruit. What is fruit is something you produce. It's being productive, right? 
I, I grow fruit trees, fig trees, all of them. I love all that, right? I, I know what a fig tree is. I can look at it. I can tell yes. what it is. Okay, an apple tree don't have to tell me it's an apple tree. I look at its fruit. How do you know a good tree? Somebody tell me. By its fruit. By its fruit. You know a good tree because it's going to have good, it's good fruit. Good, good fruit. fruit. You know a bad tree because a bad tree has what? Bad Rock. fruit. <laughs> now, Jesus is so amazing that he preached the gospel to the poor people, right? Yes. He said, this is why God sent me to preach the gospel to the poor, right? Mm -hmm. It has to be so simple yeah. that the kids can get it. He says, you got to humble yourself and be like a kid in order to enter into this kingdom. Okay, so it's got to be simple, right? And let's keep this simple because verse 20, it says, wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. All right, but look, right, look at um, verse 19. It says, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is what? Hewn down. Hewn down. down is to cut down. Hewn down. Yep. And what? Cast, cast into the into fire. The fire. Yeah. Does that mean cast into the fire, or does it mean cast into the fire? Somebody tell me. What does that mean? Cast, cast into the fire of hell. So it's by your fruit. Right? You'll be cast into the fire. You either have good fruit or evil fruit. Depending on your fruit is where you go. We read in Romans 8, it says, he says, right, we said, we, we literally read it. Let's keep on going. Please continue, sis, 21, all the way to the bottom. Not everyone that says it to me, Lord. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead, Hannah, finish this one off, and then we'll let the other sister do the next one. Okay. Not there we go. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will my of God. my Father, which is in heaven. All Jesus. right, let's stop right there. Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord. All right, let's just say right now in 2020, how does that apply to us? Many people call themselves Christians. All right? have to do Right. They say, they say, Lord, Lord, Jesus is my Lord. They say that. That's what I'm saying. Their confession. So the confession is Lord, Lord. Are we all saying that's what the scripture says here? Yes. Hey, now that we have everybody on here, I want to make a few statements. Number one, the Lord has directed me to deal with these topics to read the scripture and do mm -hmm. have a discussion and do what one of the basic christian disciplines is is where a believer a body of believers that's us assembling together are looking at topics based upon the word of god and we're going to come up with a judgment we're going to come up with you know what we're all we should have a consensus here we should say you know what the word says this, and we'll be able to go through today together and say, is it clear in the word that this is truth? And then this is truth, and this is truth, and this is truth, because this is going to bring up several or dozens of, of different topics. We should be able to say, you know, and as we discuss this, this is what the word says about this. This is what the word says about this, and so on and so forth, right? So let this be a demonstration of heaven how we take any topic and we look at it based upon the word, right? And anything that doesn't line up in our minds with the knowledge of God, we have a personal responsibility to pull that down, cast it down, and bring our, our mind into the level of obedience, lining up with the word of God. Y'all follow me? Yes. Yes. So let this be a discussion. This is a practice. This is what, this is us learning how to do this because we're going to have a lot of things. The goal of us assembling is to provoke one another to what? Anybody remember that scripture? Under good works. Yep. And what? Love. Truth. 
Love that scripture. You provoke them to good works and keep you know into the into loving one another. Works. So loving good works. You know what I mean. So loving means don't word just in don't just love in word only, but in deed and in truth. Right. So you love not just by saying good things, but you love by actually doing something. Right. You can't see your brother in need and say, "Hey, go and be blessed, brother." It says if you shut up the bowels of mercy and uh, compassion inside of you, how does the love of God dwell in you? If you see a brother in need and you don't do anything to love them, you see the hearing and you can have all the good intentions, but if you don't do anything, that's what you're judged by. Hmm. All right, let's keep reading. So the word says right here, not everyone that says unto me, so they're saying unto Jesus, Lord, Lord. Not everyone that says to Jesus, in other words, confessing that you are my Lord. It says that if anyone that believes in their heart and confesses their mouth that he is Lord, they shall be saved. Anybody? Not everybody that says to me, Lord, Lord. So in other words, they're confessing that Jesus is their Lord. Am I, is this, can everybody see that? Yes, yes, yes. The reason why I'm asking so many questions is because this is going against so many things you've probably heard. I will slow down and take all the time it takes because every one of you, you're worth it. Every one of you are sons of God. Okay, Every one of you deserve to be line upon line going through this and destroying doctrines of devils. Do you understand? The Bible says... In the last days, they won't even adhere to truth, to uh -huh. sound doctrine, guys. They're going to go find someone that'll itch their ear. Yeah, new age. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we can go on a long list of that, right? New age. So we're going we're gonna to get rid of all those traditions and doctrines of men, and we're going to get in the word, okay? So everyone that confesses to me or saith unto me, Lord, Lord, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, so these people are saying, Lord, Lord. He says, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord. Right? Jesus is saying, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord. So everyone that says they're Christian will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Okay. But. Yes. So not everyone that hears the gospel, hears the salvation message, and then says that they believe and confess with their mouth and call him Lord, they won't enter into the kingdom of heaven because, but it's, but he that hears and what? Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah, okay. it. But he that doeth do the will of the Father which is in heaven. Remember Romans 2? He that with and continually with patience, he continually does good. In other words, the will of my father, which is in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth. So many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, haven't we? Here's the things that they did. They were doing things. We prophesied in your name. We cast out devils. <clears throat> we did many wonderful wonderful works in your name but what will Jesus say unto him I never knew you depart from me now earlier he just said right here everyone that saith unto me that means there was conversation they said unto Jesus right <clears throat> the Bible says that he knows what you need before you ask him. When you talk to him, he hears you guys. These people said the prayer or whatever you want to say. They said, Lord, Lord, they said unto him. They talked to him. God hears when you talk to him, okay? Yeah. They might have started off talking to him, but look, but he that doeth the will of my father. Now many will say to me, now they're talking to him again. Okay. Now they're now this is on that day. This is the day of judgment, guys, <clears throat> when they're being judged. Lord, didn't we past tense prophesied in your name? 
We cast out devils and did many wonderful works. I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. They were only choosing to do part of, it says here, he that doeth the will of my father. So they only chose to do a few of the will of his father, a few things. So you can choose to do a few things, but what were they doing? They were living in iniquity. Iniquity. So you choose Mark, to go. Can I ask mind. you something there, though? Please. Yes, ma'am. They were doing it in word and tongue. It sounds like they were saying it in word and tongue, like you're saying, but they didn't take it further to to go ahead uh, and believe in Christ and have the, their repentance of their sin. And in, in a, other words, to me, it sounds like they're just doing these things and it sort of mocks the Lord Jesus by not following through in repentance of their sin. They might've been doing it in word and tongue to own Christ and say they own him, but without the confession of the sin and the, what really brings them so that Jesus knows them. Yes. What do you say? No, you're right. Yeah. It says they were working. Remember, works, mm -hmm. right? You'll be judged. That's what he said. Right. Those that continually do good works go to eternal life. Those to finish the problem, right? Right. They had to finish here. it. They didn't, did they? So right. they said, Lord, Lord, but didn't fully repent, like you said. Because here's yeah. what we know they were working iniquity. They were doing those things and still working iniquity. Y'all remember that story mm -hmm. where Jesus said, where the disciples came back from going out. All right, he sent the disciples out to heal the sick and cast out devils. Mm -hmm. They came right. back rejoicing. Luke 10, 19. I guess we'll go there right now. Yeah. Right, just for the sake of it, Luke chapter 10, yeah. right here. Behold, I give unto you, well, right here, 17. The 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. They came back with joy, mm -hmm. right? Right. I'm excited. Wow. The devils come out of people by your name. Wow. Okay. So they were doing the good works, right? And he said, and he said to them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions mm -hmm. over all, okay, the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. But look what he says here. Read that, Mary, please. Mary Beth, Beth Hadley, <laughs> notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So he was, he was teaching his new disciples a point here. Hey, <laughs> yeah, they're subject to you under my name, but you need to be rejoicing because your names are written in heaven. In other words, there is more than just doing the works, guys. Amen. All right. It's about keeping your name written in heaven because we're going to get to Revelations where he said he'll blot out their name if they don't overcome and endure to the end. Right. You need to rejoice and make sure, hey, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. You need to rejoice that you're living in Christ and abiding in him because if you don't abide, you'll be cut off, you'll wither, and you'll be cast into the fire. That's what I'm We're going to get there, but let's keep reading. All right. Mm. Now, Matthew 5. I'm going to keep reading, guys, because the word of God has to do all the talking here. Because, Lord, there are so mm. many doctrines of devils okay. out here on this. Well, here we go. <laughs> He'll profess them. I never knew you. So there's an intimate relation. There is a relationship. Knowing him, letting him teach you. If you know him, that means you would not be working iniquity. Y'all see that? Right. So you can be in iniquity and still be casting out devils and doing wonderful works and preaching and prophesying. Y'all know this. Y'all see the preachers yeah. fall all the time in sin. Y'all see it. You can yeah. do that. You can be a believer and giving and tithing and doing all these things, guys, but living in iniquity. And mm -hmm. guess what happens if you're in iniquity? Thrown into the fire. That's what the word says. <laughs> Depart from me. That's right. I'm reading the Bible. Yeah. All right, let's keep reading. So, Hannah, let's go 24 down to 27. Let's read that real quick. 
therefore, who will these things do with him? I will liken him to a wise man. Hold up, did you say licking? I know this one. Lion. <laughs> okay, but you're sounding like, like a robot. A, <laughs> a what? Oh, do I need to slow down? Uh, you just kind of sound like a robot. Let's see. All right, let's do it again. Okay. Yeah. All right, so here's Therefore, the same. Therefore. Okay, therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which okay, built stop. his house upon a rock. All right, stop right there. Hearing the sayings and what? Doing them. Do them. All right, so we're, we're in the do This is Jesus talking. We're hearing a theme here, hearing and doing. And the I'm going to keep reading. The rain descended, floods came, wind blew, beat upon the house that fell not. It was founded on a rock. And then the same thing. Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, all right, and doeth them not. So be like unto a foolish man. So a wise man hears the word and does them. Foolish hears the word and does not do them. Look, the same rain came, the same floods came, the same winds, everything beat on the house. It came to both. So listen, both heard the word, right? Both heard the word, but one chose to do it and one didn't. One had a great fall. One was, was founded on the rock, which is Jesus. And that's the knowledge of God, his word, these sayings of mine, and does those sayings. That's what that's what 2 Corinthians 10 was about. Pulling down stronghold imaginations and every thought to the knowledge of God. Being taking your disobedience, bringing it into obedience. All right? Okay. Let's keep on going. Y'all ready? I love y'all. This is going to get yeah. I'm yeah. Get ready. Let's go to Matthew 10. Matthew 10. Matthew 10. Florence, it's your turn. Matthew 10, 28 to 33. Is it on the screen or you want me to look it up in my Bible? It's on the screen. It's right there. It's highlighted. Okay. And fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Okay, who is that? Who is what? Who's him that is able to destroy both soul and body in hell? The Father. Yeah. That's God. Yes. In hell? Oh, yeah. Okay, God the Father. Don't fear men. They're able to kill the body, but they can't kill that soul. Listen, they can't put that soul in hell. God, you need to fear God. Y'all mm -hmm. definitely, this is stuff you don't hear preached in churches. I'm telling you right now. But listen, mm -hmm. I'm reading the scripture. Now, mm -hmm. I'm reading this, verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? Without your father? Is there something else missing here? No, the heavenly father. Your father knows every single bird that falls and dies. Yeah, but it doesn't say without your father, it stops his father. Without your father, your heavenly father, that's what he's talking about. Okay. But the very hairs of your head of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are all of more value than many sparrows. Woo. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, <clears throat> him will I confess also before my father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. All right. Okay. So don't fear men, fear God. All right. If you deny, confess me. If you confess Jesus before men on earth, he'll confess you before his Father. If you deny him, what will he do? Deny you. Deny us. All right. Who's Jesus talking to here? Us. Us. 
to us. Yeah. He's talking to disciples right here because right here, here's what he's telling them. He called him his 12 disciples. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. He took 12 yeah. apostles, right? He sent them forth. He says, go, right? He's telling them to go. He says right here, verse 7, as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's right here within your reach. Kingdom of heaven is at hand. He told them to do this, heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received. Freely give. Freely give. Freely so he talked about them going in the name of Jesus, preaching and doing good works. Oh my goodness. Wow. This is his disciples. He told them, disciples <laughs> down here, don't be if he told his disciples. Do not be afraid of men. Right? I just read it. it says, don't be afraid of men. They can kill the body, but they, you see, but God can kill, he can throw you in hell. So fear God. Don't fear men. If he's telling his disciples, if you deny me when you go and preach, when they come at you and persecute you, when they come at you and try to beat you or kill you, if you deny me, I will deny you before my father. All right, I'm reading the Bible. Is this pretty clear, right? Everybody, everybody follow me. We're going to keep going. Yeah. Who wants to read now? Matthew 12. Yes. Deborah, your turn, sis. Deborah Coffin. We're going to Matthew 12, okay. verse 33 through 37. Now, we already read this, so what I'm going to do is we're going to read it, and we'll just <clears throat> recap. Okay. Read it out loud, please. Go okay. ahead. Yep. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. O oh, generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things but i say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment for by thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned wow all right <laughs> I mean, you're either a, a good tree. How do we know you're a good tree? Well, we know by your fruit, right? Right. James said, if you mm. tell me you've got faith, well, I'm going to see your faith by your works. Right? He says, if you have faith, well, I'm going to be able to look at your fruit and see that you have faith. If you've been born again and you repented and you live for Jesus, people should be able to watch you and see works or fruit will look like jesus eventually you see now last here's the next thing words it says that by your words you'll be justified or be condemned mm -hmm. so in colossians 3 it says whatsoever ye do in word or in deed do all in the name of jesus mm -hmm. so your words are part of your works god see oh. when i was in that's one thing that when i was in heaven that time, um i don't know how everybody here hasn't heard this but there was two angels i had an angel that scribe was a scribe angel that tracked he literally recorded my account for heaven's records my words and everything I do is recorded. Hmm. You better love 
God and take <laughs> take care of his stuff because as we read later on, it's a fearful thing to be in the hands of the living God who has tracked everything you do <laughs> because he's a king and we're king's sons. We're princes. Every prince has a scribe that tracks everything they do. This is a kingdom and the king takes his kingdom and his business very seriously. Now, he will love you and train you, and he's giving you all that the Holy Spirit will teach and train you up so that you will know and understand what he expects of you, okay? And that's where the church is supposed to do a good job to teach and train people. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so by your word. Now we're going to go to the next scripture. Who wants to go to chapter 13 for me? 